Hello, and welcome to the Lazy Dietitian series. I'm Karen Bryla McNeese, dietitian with the UK Health and Wellness Program, and I am your Lazy Dietitian. As we discussed in my first video about healthiest eating, the Lazy Dietitian is built on the philosophy that there is no such thing as perfect eating. But how do we apply that philosophy to our everyday eating? And what kinds of foods would the Lazy Dietitian recommend for helping people do this? The answers to these questions will be the focus of our discussion today. When we operate under the assumption that there is a perfect choice, no choice feels good enough, and we constantly feel dissatisfied. This is especially problematic when you consider that we make over 200 food-related choices a day. Trying to make the best choice about every food decision in our day is exhausting and unsustainable. We get what's called decision fatigue. When it comes to food, many people feel panic that they won't make the perfect choice. And when they do finally make a choice, they immediately second guess their decision and think, I could have made a better choice. Maybe this sounds familiar to you. A lot of this panic comes from the belief that we must avoid food that comes in a box, bag, can, jar, or the freezer aisle. We've all heard that advice to shop the perimeter of the store. But by following this kind of advice, you are missing out on a lot of foods that can offer nutrition and convenience. Personally, I'm kind of scared to think about how empty my fridge or pantry would look if I only shopped the perimeter of the store. People who are always trying to optimize their decisions and make the best choice are called maximizers. Ironically, maximizers are actually less satisfied with their choices and struggle with a fear of missing out. And that fear of missing out can lead to a lot of regret and anxiety. This is where the term satisfice comes into play. It's a clever hybrid of the words satisfy and suffice. Satisficers make choices that are good enough, and they actually tend to be more satisfied with their choices than maximizers. When making a choice, they look for the minimum outcome they're willing to accept. It's an outcome they're okay with, even if it's not the best possible one. Think about, for example, shopping at the grocery store. You are looking at rows upon rows of cereal, trying to decide which one to buy. Ask yourself, what is the minimum outcome for a good enough choice? Maybe you decide the minimum outcome is a cereal with fairly low sugar and decently high fiber. You scan the aisle, find a cereal that meets these criteria, and off you go. You're no longer spending 15 minutes weighing all your options. And you're satisfied with your choice and unlikely to feel regret or anxiety about it. Now, I'd like to take a few moments to discuss the list of foods I am about to unveil. The list contain my favorite healthiest convenience foods, and they are divided into the following categories. Grains, proteins, fruits, vegetables, dairy, fats, snacks, entrees, and condiments. First of all, these are not exhaustive lists, but hopefully representative of the kinds of products I want to highlight. Depending on where you shop, you may not see the exact brands or products I have listed, but I hope you will be able to find something similar. When products were not brand specific, I did default to a Kroger brand since this is probably the most widely used grocery store in Kentucky. I often hear clients say something like, well, I should be able to do fill in the blank, cut up my own vegetables, make my own snack packs, things like that. And while I admire the sentiment behind this, I ask them, but do you ever actually do those things? We all have good intentions, but real life gets in the way. For example, you may buy a big bag of carrots with the intention to cut up a bunch of carrot sticks. 
and you may buy a big container of hummus to divvy out for those carrot sticks. Sure, you can make a nice little stack like the one shown here. But how many bags of carrots and containers of hummus have gone bad while you get around to executing this plan? And what kind of snack did you eat instead? Maybe you grabbed a handful of chips because that was quickest and easiest. What if you had this option instead? Individual bags of baby carrots in single serve containers of hummus that are ready to eat and no cleanup involved. I do want to acknowledge the fact that there's often a cost associated with convenience. When things are pre-cut or pre-packaged into single serve containers, you will pay for that convenience. But I like to remind people that paying a little more for convenience may be worth it if it means you will not waste food and actually eat the healthier foods you intend to. Choosing healthiest convenience foods often requires some sort of nutritional compromise. It requires you to be a satisficer and to be comfortable with a good enough choice. And remember, compromise isn't a cop-out or a sign of failure. It means you understand that no one food choice is perfect and that if you make the best compromises you can based on your minimum outcomes, things will work out in the long run. This is a graphic from a tote bag I actually own, given to me by my fellow dietitian at UK Health and Wellness, Vanessa Oliver. I know it's meant to be funny, but there is always some truth in humor, right? When it comes to food compromises, the bad news is that there are no hard and fast guidelines I can give you that will make sense for everyone. But the good news is that it gives you the freedom and flexibility to make the compromises and choices that work best for you. When you look at the Lazy Dietitian food list, you will see that I have included shopping tips to accompany each one. It's my attempt to provide you with some guidance about the challenges and features common to each category of foods. Please take the time to read these shopping tips when looking at the lists. In general, these are some questions I considered when deciding whether to add a food to the list. Is the ingredient list ridiculously long? and filled with ingredients I cannot identify. Does this food provide some kind of nutritional benefit? I like to approach food from a perspective where I am adding something helpful and not simply avoiding something potentially harmful. And finally, how does this food compare to other options? Similar products can vary greatly in terms of nutrition, so I tried to compare and choose the ones I thought had a decent overall nutrition profile. But I strongly recommend doing your own comparisons when you shop for healthiest convenience foods. I have been using lists like these for a long time with my clients. The overwhelming response I get is something like, I didn't realize it was okay to eat stuff like this. The phrase stuff like this always gets my attention. It's often a sign that a person is stuck in that good or bad mentality around food and always worrying about making a perfect choice. Generally, most people feel a great sense of relief and excitement when they see lists like these. But sometimes there is resistance, and I understand that. Like I said in my first video, the concept of healthiest eating is not for everyone. And even if someone is receptive, it can take time to accept that healthiest eating is something that may work for them. I hope this discussion motivates you to think about how you can embrace good enough decisions and experience all the benefits that come from doing so. A link to the Lazy Dietitian website with the food lists has been included in the chat box for you. Next week, we'll look at how we can take items from the Lazy Dietitian food lists to create simple and tasty meals and snacks. I hope to see you then, and thank you for joining me.